Welcome to Have You Heard, the social media podcast by us here at The Social Shepherd, where we tell you everything you need to know about social if you work in digital. My name is Zoe. I'm one of the co-founders here and the CEO. And today I'm joined by... I'm Holly. And you are? I'm a creative content executive. Welcome. And... I'm Becky and I am Influencer Marketing Manager. Fabulous. Thank you for joining me, guys. So today we've got a plethora of topics to talk through. So we've got Meta's expanded agreement with Universal Music Group. We've got Amazon integration for TikTok shop, YouTube testing, mixing short and long form content in the feed, Instagram testing friend map, which is given Snapchat, <laughs> um, threads analytics dashboard for desktop. And we've got some other topics to discuss, including ASA rulings against Stephen Bartlett, um, Mattel, Polly Pocket, and a new Mac cosmetics collaboration. Mm. So we've got a lot to get through. Um, we can get straight stuck into it. So firstly, Meta have expanded their global agreement with Universal Music Group, UMG have had a lot of press in the recent months because of all the drama that we had with TikTok whenever the agreement expired, now it's back. Um, but this is actually the first time that Meta have updated their music licensing agreement with UMG after signing it for the first time in 2017. Um, so I guess it means that we should hopefully be able to discover more songs on Instagram. Um, yeah, good. I yeah. guess. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and to add to that, I also think it's really important because it does help protect artists. There's so many up and coming yeah. artists that use TikTok in particular to get off the ground. And it just means that they are able to be fairly compensated for the music that they're putting out there. Yeah, a hundred percent. And we've seen like a massive, there was, um, did anyone, you know, that song, I think she was called Cat. And she yes. passed away, unfortunately, oh, so and now her royalties are going like through yeah. to her son and stuff. But mm. like, and obviously it's so so heartbreaking that situation that that she passed away. But the fact that she was able to kind of like set up, yeah, it was for her son. For wasn't her it? son, I think that mm. was so lovely. And so, it, it, hopefully, with kind of ruling this through, we'll be able to see like a similar thing yeah. with Instagram. Um, Maria, are we reading the update correctly? Is that in line with what they're doing? Yeah, I mean, the only thing they've added is WhatsApp. I don't know how this is going to play. No. So they've added WhatsApp to the mix. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we can send our friends songs on. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, overall, it's a, it's a good one. It's music to our ears whenever these platforms have um, better arrangements. Although, obviously, for business accounts, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more convoluted. Mm. Um, but it is good for creators, particularly. Yeah, definitely. I do think as well, like when we saw loads of sounds actually get taken down, I think with the expanded agreement, it will be interesting to see like different sounds popping off again and like any new trends and stuff that we can actually jump on from a creative standpoint. Do you think it will have an impact on um, the fact that trends tend to start on TikTok and then they move through to Meta? Do you think we'll see more of a consistency across the board given that Meta has this expanded agreement now? Yeah, I do wonder if like maybe we'll see more potentially like trends that come from trending sounds coming from reels and then following on to TikTok. Yeah, yeah. I think that might be quite interesting to see if it kind of flips the, mm. the narrative in that sense. But yeah, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and we'll see. We'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> it's exciting, guys. Um, Amazon integration for tic on TikTok for purchases in stream. So this is huge, to be entirely honest. Mm. So um, they're incentivizing shopping in-app to make it as frictionless as possible. Both companies have partnered, and it's only in the US. So TikTok users can shop selected Amazon products directly from the ads without having to leave the platform. This is massive. Yeah. And I think particularly mm -hmm. for your CPG, FMCG brands. So I don't know, like we've been talking to a lot of businesses that sell like dishwasher tablets yeah. and stuff like that. And they... do a dishwasher company really isn't going to have a direct to consumer website they are going to be selling through platforms like amazon yeah. or like other retailers but the fact that they can directly link yeah. their own amazon account in there that's just a massive game changer without having to go through all of the chaos of like setting up for tiktok fulfillment mm. and getting all of that mm. ironed out so i think that's 
huge to be entirely honest yeah i agree from a brand perspective there are so many opportunities to lose a consumer in the sales funnel so to be able to especially when you're using a fast moving platform like tiktok um to be able to close that funnel as quickly as possible without yeah. asking the consumer mm -hmm. to leave the app is going to be really beneficial and i think the crossover and the types of products that you would buy on amazon and tiktok is actually quite similar yeah 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 definitely i do think i use TikTok a lot as like a search tool for when I am trying to find like if if someone's recommended me a product I will search it on TikTok and get like I don't know a video of someone using it or something so I do, do definitely you purchase think, on the platform I've I have made a few TikTok shop purchases I made three I this week yeah have you? I, I love it I just yeah. like the hairbrush you know the, the that's all it's over so mine good I tried yeah. it last night I love it have you got it it was 20 quid yeah I am what I'm close to that one it's, it's like a heated a round one. Oh, brush I've seen yeah this. really good <gasps> big recommend oh yeah I, might get one. I bought some shampoo the other day really I've just I've just gone mad yeah <laughs> I do think especially because once you see it once like I've yeah this is with the hairbrush for me like I've seen it once clicked on a few videos and now it's all I'm getting mm. so I do definitely think with this like integration of making it such a seamless easy way to purchase something I think it's going to turn a lot more people into consumers because I know like if I see a video yeah. I'm guilty of saving it being like yeah I'll buy that later and I just won't so yeah. I think when it makes it so easy like yeah. this I think it's gonna yeah it's gonna have quite a big impact on sales I think I'm interested to know with Amazon because it says that um so you can shop select Amazon ads on TikTok without leaving the app but it's only select products at this point in time so it's not mm. like okay so i guess they're gonna test it basically and most likely if it goes well because at the minute for brands to set up on tiktok shop it's not the easiest process mm. unless you're a shopify store at this point in time so for those brands if it does go well with this amazon integration it would mean that technically they would just have to connect the two in the back end and be yeah. able to go for it but at the minute they haven't quite ruled it out yeah like that you can just choose to connect in. There. Yeah. Mm. I do wonder if this is going to be like, like you said, it's in like testing phases. So like, if this is going to be the gateway brand. Oh, 100%. And it's just, yeah. Like, it's going to be really amazing to see like how this kind of snowballs and how popular it actually is. But I think social commerce is like at that stage at the minute. For us, like we harp on about it all the time. Like it's kind of like old news for us, but it's not whilst it might be widely adopted in some of our circles, it's not actually that widely adopted in terms of the larger population yeah. and the percentage of people that are shopping on social commerce. But it does beg the beg the wider question. Does, does that even a thing? Um, it does kind of make you want to ask the question of what in the future, if this does continue to roll out, what's the purpose of a website? Yeah. yeah. If you can just so purchase true. directly on Instagram yeah. or, you know, wouldn't shock me if... Google, like Google already have like a shoppable feature. Like if you don't even need yeah. ChatGPT, for example, like already plugged into all these platforms, wouldn't shock me if you can start just buying from ChatGPT. Like you can buy from Alexa, for example. Mm. So what's the future of commerce yeah. as we start looking at all of these different streams that are added convenience for us as consumers? Yeah. And I think the reason um, social commerce works so well is because you've got so many influencers and mm -hmm. creators actively selling products and that's something that can't compete with a website which has just got a bit of text and a few images mm. and i think tiktok have done such a good job on the creator side of it because creators can opt to just promote products yeah. and then they can get their affiliate commission straight through the platform mm. like they can just hop on it basically and they're encouraged to do so yeah so i think that's huge because tracking of affiliates and influencer success has always been very difficult and you've had to connect through GA and look at last click and coupon codes and stuff but I think you know for all of the bug bearers that we may have with TikTok sometimes like they have got social commerce yeah right mm. yeah I guess the what they need to do next is just legitimize it and I yeah. think by adding in a partner like Amazon yeah who went through a very similar phase of kind of being looked as cheap tacky yeah kind of is still sometimes <laughs> but it, it does help legitimize it having the backing of that them yeah. as a company mm -hmm. there. That's exciting. Um, YouTube is testing mixing shorts and long form into one single feed. Do you guys scroll on YouTube shorts? No, never. I'll be honest, I don't. Do you? No, but Jack does. Oh, does he? <laughs> what does he 
what does he find on there though? I mean, it's the same stuff as you're going to get on Reels and um, TikTok. Most people, most brands just cross post. They don't really tend to have like different mm. strategies. I guess the audience on YouTube is slightly different. Like I know some of the uh, guys in the office, mm. they will turn to YouTube shorts more than they would turn to like TikTok. Chris, you, you know, no. <laughs> 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 absolutely not <laughs> um i know some of the guys will go to youtube shorts a little bit yeah um and there's a really big opportunity for reach and views on youtube shorts as well if you get it get it right mm -hmm. um but i guess where you know tiktok is now trying to creep into the longer form content youtube already has the longer form content and they're on the rise in the shorter form content yeah so i guess that's just quite an interesting sort of like if you're scrolling through your feed in one minute you have a 30 minute video and the next minute you've got a 10 second video yeah mm. how do you think we'll integrate with that personally i have to be in a very different mood to want to be able to consume long form content mm. as opposed to short yeah. form content so typically if i'm tired sitting on the sofa that's when i want to be scrolling on tiktok not thinking about anything um whereas when i'm on youtube i tend to want to focus a little bit more or have it on in the background and i can imagine if you're scrolling through a feed and it's a mixture of long and short you're going to have to have such a strong hook at the start of the long form content otherwise you're going to lose people really quickly mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Do you know, interestingly, it says that YouTube Shorts has been the platform's award-winning format. They reached over 70 billion views in 2023 and generated almost nine times more interactions than long form, which isn't mm. a shock, I no. guess, because of what you just said, yeah. the mindset and the way in which people scroll. Like watching YouTube, whilst you can do it on your phone, it's more sometimes more of a desktop activity yes yeah. if, yeah. I, do, if I watch TV activity uh, yeah 100 yeah. it's quite rare that i will actually watch a full youtube video on my phone yeah. just because i do sometimes i feel like i'm watching a film and i want the full yeah. experience yeah. so i want it on yeah on my laptop or on the tv but i do think it's quite a strange integration because like becky said you do have to be in a very different mindset to consume either short yeah. form or long yeah. form and i know when i do go on tiktok i'm I am sort of just wanting to sit there and just go They're through like the two short different ones. Apps almost. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not the same. Because I, I know no. if I go on my phone to try and find a, a longer form YouTube video before, I then go and put it on the TV, and I like accidentally get onto shorts. I'm like, oh no, I'm not. I'm not in the mindset yeah. for that mm, right now. Yeah. Like I want to get off that. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because instagram came out with an update a couple of months ago and they were like we're done trying to be everything for everyone yeah. we're going to focus on short form we're going to focus on community and that's our bag yeah whereas tiktok and youtube are still going through this process of trying to be everything for everyone however i think youtube has the upper hand in that because people are so used to going to it for that desktop viewing and then we've got shorts for those mobile users mm. so where we look at them in completely different ways like they're branded differently like yeah. shorts and youtube you treat you treat them differently differently 100 percent. and the way i tend to watch long form content is i'll pick a series so it'll be like a series of different influencer content um and i can't imagine scrolling and just coming across random long form videos yeah. um and you're right in the sense that when you watch it it's typically on a um a desktop or on a laptop mm. um and i think this says a lot about my attention span but i like to be on my phone while i've got a youtube <laughs> video on in the background yeah so i can just sit there and watch a long video interestingly so you work at influencer yes who's your favorite influencer on each platform sorry this is such a question i didn't prep you for this at no all. you didn't <laughs> um so on youtube i really enjoy watching yes theory they're okay. a group of influencers they travel around the world um they meet lots of new people they like to immerse themselves in the culture so i really enjoy watching that um on instagram i don't think i could pick a favorite influencer i've got so many that are like my comfort influencers and i mm. love scrolling through their story content every day um and tiktok I do have favorite influencers, but I don't use TikTok for influencers. I use it to scroll and I quite like the randomness. Are you an FYP I am. scroller? I think most 100%. people are an FYP scroller. Yeah, I don't. What else can you be? Well, you, you might scroll on your friend's feed, for oh. example. Oh, no. No. If I go on that by mistake, I'm like, get yeah. me back. <laughs> 
I'm not annoyed like, pure support. discovery yeah. then on yeah. TikTok. Yeah, yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it? Like, Instagram really is your community platform, mm. and yeah. then TikTok is just pure discovery. Mm. Who are your favorite influencers? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm still spooked by this Molly May and Tommy Fury. Oh, I, mean, no. I can't. No, we were talking you know about I actually yesterday. don't even want to talk about it in the podcast out of respect for them. But yeah. I know. <laughs> Oh my but god! I'm shook. Yeah, um, such a shock. Uh, I don't know. I I have watched a few different influencers. It depends what mindset I'm in. Like sometimes, mm. like on a Sunday, this is so embarrassing. I shouldn't admit this, but I'll like watch some like business influencers and like, oh, get myself really? like, pumped up for the week. <laughs> oh my god! Like, like, your that. work week starts on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has to. You got prep. <laughs> you don't prep on Sunday morning. You get Sunday scary. Yeah, it's not yeah. Sunday yeah. reset. That. No. <laughs> Um, but then if I'm like tired, I'll just watch like a vlog that I can like mindlessly, yeah. like don't have to concentrate too hard. And, like there's a time and a place for like, I call it productive content versus yes. unproductive content. Yeah. Mm. TikTok scrolling is unproductive content. Agreed. Yeah. Something that's going to like aid your life, like bring mm. like some level of like motivation. That's productive content. So I try and like split it into those different pots. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I have like one yeah favorite mm. influencer yeah i do wonder if like many people actually do because i feel like you do have to get different things yeah. from different platforms you'll have, like, and people fashion influencers you'll yeah. be like oh, i really like their style exactly. you don't actually really know that much about yeah. them and then you'll have people whose opinions you might really like align with and like yeah. validate with so it's like it is different it's like friends yeah you have different friends for different <laughs> <You> things <do. laughs> just I... your online friends that know nothing about you and you know everything about them <laughs> <laughs> i've got like two i don't know their names though this is like one of those cases but they're like i've got one influencer that I'm like will put all my confidence in because she's got like so much hair care knowledge yeah. so I'll only go to like her page when I want hair care information and then I've got one for skin information as well but like I know nothing else about them so it's like I only go to them for, so they can benefit me <laughs> <laughs> nice okay well we'll we've we've diverged but we'll see what happens with YouTube and long and short form um Instagram testing friend map this is find my friend, Snap Map. Yes. Everything. I actually, I'm like Snapchat's biggest fan. Are you? I love Snapchat. Oh I my watch gosh. the news on Snapchat. Do you? Yeah. Interesting. Sorry, girls, we've got to be involved. <laughs> that's hilarious. I just like Snapchat for all like the memories that pop up from over yeah. the years. I think yeah. that's the reason I don't want to go. I don't speak to anyone on it, but no. I watch the news. And I like the little Snapchat series they do. I get so excited <laughs> when a new episode is released. Um... <laughs> But I do like I did like Snapchat for the for the map feature mm. as well because you would get the, like little bubbles, like of when there was like lots of activity in one yes. area and you could like zoom in and be like what's going on yeah get famous so I wonder if Instagram's gonna do that um but it says that the the Instagram map would be shared with friends only close friends or only followers they follow back and would include text posts and notes and video updates based on where they were taken. I feel like there needs to be another option for you to pick exactly who on Instagram you want to share your location with. Because I have mm, a close friend. It's quite friends... dangerous, actually. It yeah. is. I have a close friends group who I share stories to, but I wouldn't necessarily want my location going to everyone on my close friends group. Yeah, I don't think I'd... I, so think, I think I'd use it to, like, so see you what can, other you people You can share it to. just with your close friends. Oh, so you can... It's not a close friends group. You can select... Oh, then you select users. Yeah. Can you select specifically or is it just all your close friends mariah close friends or only followers that follow back and you can just edit the close friends list oh okay, oh, okay. so separate um, to stories yeah. i think i'd quite like that currently i use fire my friends and i've got most of my friends on there mm. so i think it'd be more fun to have it on instagram because i read that you can upload pictures from different yeah. areas upload notes and i think it'd be quite fun if i could do that with them mm. it'd be quite a fun little feature like like treasure hunts yeah like leaving like little notes <laughs> yeah. throughout the day i wonder if there'll be an option if you can see where people are without actually sharing your location i wonder if it has to be a reciprocated thing mm -hmm. because i think i'm quite nosy so i'd like to see what other people are up to or where they're about but i don't know if i'd necessarily want to actually put my location there because i never did it on snap maps either i was always on ghost mode because like yeah I'd i mean location my sharing is quite scary if it there's is, a limited yeah. control yeah and definitely just from like a safety perspective as well um yeah interesting I, th I think if you have control over it i don't think it's a bad 
it's a bad tool for the platform mm. to bring out but you have to be able to have control over what you can see and what yeah, people can definitely. see of your information yeah um I wonder if there'll be any opportunities for brands that I imagine it's not for business accounts but um I know a lot of brands will do um what's the word I'm looking for when you do like a hunt scavenger, scavenger. hunt oh, yeah. yeah it'd be cute yeah like if they had like multiple little locations and they could have like different like notes and like content. Exactly. That yeah. could be quite sweet actually. Yeah. And there could, could be like fun. a little prize at the end, mm. just like a little giveaway. Oh, Instagram competitions just got taken yeah. up all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see what happens there. And then we've got threads analytics dashboard for desktop. So Instagram keep working on pushing threads. Um, especially now that X is facing some backlash again. The platform have launched a new analytics dashboard for desktop, which includes metrics like views um, and interactions. I mean, great. We kind of, to be honest, that's kind of like a standard expectation for a yeah, platform to agreed. have. So you probably should have rolled it out earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never actually <laughs> jumped on the threads train. Wow. I've never made it. and I, But I do think that's because I wasn't ever a X user either. So I never got on it, but I do think like, yeah, like you said, like it is quite a standard feature, but I guess mm. it's like makes you think a, how much a, like brands or like social media managers actually using it that like these insights and analytics are well, going to become really useful. Like I think that's quite interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because I guess we went through this period where really like it was like the reign of Instagram for mm. like a good like five years there. And they became way more advanced in their reporting because they had time to do so. And then obviously TikTok came along. It had been around for a while, but they really it really went through a resurgence. And actually they have very limited reporting options. They're only really getting into that sequence now. But then because Threads is owned by Instagram, you would expect them to just automatically roll at the same level of... Mm. But yeah, we'll see. Um, I don't think Threads is going to be a thing forever i agree yeah I agree. there was such a huge hype around it when it was first released but it really quickly fell off i think it was like a month later and most people have deleted their accounts yeah and i'm still getting so many notifications being like your friends want you to join threads and i'm like no oh, they don't yeah, all the time. <laughs> share this to threads <laughs> i know like, i don't want I to know. <laughs> um okay well we'll see what happens there but we're not we're not huge threads advocates here <laughs> um Okay, cool. So we're on to our highlights. Unless there are any updates or anything that you guys have seen this week that you want to talk about? Oh, I don't I think put so. you both on the yeah, spot there. Yeah. To the top of my head. Yeah, I feel like the uh, Molly May and Tommy Fury. So it's just shaking everyone. It it's shaking the nation. Yeah. <sighs> We can't talk about it because I just want to give them their prize. No, definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to talk about Stephen Bartlett, though. Um, so, <laughs> um, so we've been ASA ruling against Stephen Bartlett. ASA is on one at the minute, particularly mm. with entrepreneurs, like founders, investors connected to brands, which is interesting. It's been a bit of a little bit of a gray area yeah Becky, you'll know more about this than the rest of us <laughs> in this room but they've upheld complaints against three facebook ads from Odie Kuehl and zoe which feature testimonials from stephen bartlett i mean i will say he absolutely rinses those products those products on his um podcast mm. and the ads are a bit intense Very to be intense. entirely honest yeah i remember there was um a whole load of backlash that he got for um you know people were claiming that his podcast had like dietary misinformation on it mm. and they didn't take down the Huel ads with his face on them and I was like surely guys someone's yeah. got to be looking at that going yeah. we should probably take yeah. these down yeah um but yeah they they do they do absolutely rinse it um all three of the ads admit the fact that Bartlett is a director of Huel and an investor in Zoe's um and the ASA says it received two complaints that it wasn't clear from the advert that he had a commercial interest in the copy in its ruling they've said that the advert could seem like an independent review and knowing he was an investor for key customers was key for customers to be able to make an informed decision about the product. The regulator also banned an ad for Huel in 2022 on a diary of a CEO podcast where the presenter said he'd become hooked on a caramel flavour of the iced coffee drink. We talked about this before the podcast. That 2022 ruling, a little bit petty. Very petty, yeah, because I think hooked is just a terminal... Oh, what was I going to say? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slang. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. Like he's just it's yeah. a passing comment that he made. However, I think if you've been caught out for it once in 2022, you'd be a little bit safer More careful. about your future ads. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, the ASA is kind of on one with these entrepreneur yeah. brands, like the Grace Beverly stuff and everything. Do we think what they're asking them to do is fair? I think it is fair. These influencers have got such a big platform that the ASA would be silly to not penalise them for not following the guidance. Because think about all the other influencers that would have watched Stephen Bartlett's um, mm. podcast, seen the ads. They then might think that it's acceptable for them to make similar ads yeah. if they've got um, commercial interest in a, in a product. Is the ownership though on Stephen Bartlett or is it on Huel because it was a paid execution? Uh, so from my perspective, I would say that it should be the brand. I think they should be giving guidance yeah. there. Um, however, Stephen Bartlett's podcast, The Diary of CEO, is a brand in its own right. So I think there needs to be a team either side having a look at those guidelines and making sure that they're following them to a T. Yeah, agree. My stance on the whole thing is I think if it's paid ads absolutely mm. like if you're using testimonials from anyone with an enhanced or incentivized interest in a company it should absolutely be stated um i find it tricky when they make these rulings on like an influencer just posting on their own story yeah saying mm. like oh look at this product type thing yeah i find that difficult because if you're following like a grace beverly or someone who does own a brand yeah you're following them because you know that person and therefore you probably know that they own that brand yeah, like so true. do you mean that's their own personal yeah like we had it one day and someone turned around to me and was like oh so every time you mention the social shepherd zoe you're yeah. gonna have to say it's an ad yeah i mean no one cares what i'm doing on my own personal instagram <laughs> if I'm just to clarify but like i i don't know I, that to me just it feels quite difficult to grasp my head around yeah. but the paid ad side of things absolutely that should be disclosed from my personal opinion yeah, yeah, I do think I agree with you. I do think like, yeah, posting on stories or Instagram, like yourself, if you do have a commercial investment in the brand, I do think there is like a gray area there. I think if you own it, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. I think if you invest in it and you don't publicly say that you invest in it and you're posting about this product, then you absolutely mm. should be disclosing yeah. that. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Um, mm. But I think this is the right um i agree with asa on this one in yeah. terms of yeah. even part of one particularly it's paid yeah we think paid mm. just disclose it yeah 100 percent um okay and then our next one one i want to talk about is the poly pocket slumber party experience mm. by airbnb so cute so cute whenever oh. i saw it because it's in a field i thought it was just a tiny box yeah but it's huge it's actually a house i really yeah I'm, I'm the same as you when i first saw it i didn't realize that that was it but I do think where it's like in a field and it does say you can stay over, but like, it doesn't look that secure. No. <laughs> like it's just in a field and I don't know where you'd actually stay in it. So you can actually stay in the Polly Pocket every yeah. day? Or you can just buy tickets to it, I think as well, to uh, go and okay. see it. Yeah. It doesn't look very comfy. No, like it's like all plastic. No, <laughs> but I think I saw something there like offering an exclusive number of like three night stays. So they're really pushing that like, sort of like urgency around it, which I think is going to, help build traction and like popularity yeah. around it oh wow yeah. i mean i love it I, lo I love it when airbnb do like their yeah, that always out so of home fun. executions yeah. so good at that. swamp i think that's did you see shrek no swamp? i didn't stop you can stay in shrek swamp really i don't know where it is <laughs> but is that not just that like an actual person has built that that wasn't an airbnb execution though was it Oh, I don't know. No, it might. I don't know. Actually. I swear that's just like one that's up for up for grabs. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I don't know what next. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then we've got Surreal and Gymshark have teamed up to launch Cardio's cereal. Yes. Yeah. Surreal never cute. miss a beat. I know. No, they smash it. So Their good. campaigns are my favourite. They're always so funny. Yeah, they do such a good job. So yeah, really, really good creative and, mm. and execution there. Um, Lick and Mac Cosmetics just dropped their exclusive Mac Black Forty Paint. I love a paint collab. Mm. I love it so much. Yeah. Anytime anyone get a Pantone color, yeah, like colors of the season. Yeah. I just think mm. it's great. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's actually black though. Hang on, Mariah, is it black? It's black. Wow. 
It's a really interesting time of the year to release a black oh, it's lipstick a, collab. It's not. It's a matte black wall paint. Mac black. Am I missing what? the collab? Wait, so it's just um hang on. So Mac It's the deepest black yet. But what's that got to do with Mac? Yeah. I guess mm, Mac cosmetics are a bit dark and mysterious sometimes. I suppose, but why would they need to give their input into a paint brand? Like the the paint brand should be It would able to make get that more pigment. sense. Maybe they are gonna bring it out if there was like a matching lipstick to go with it. Yeah, and it was like maybe. something that would work. But it seems to be a bit of a one way partnership at this point in time. It does. It's also such a strange time of the year to release a black product. You'd think it'd yeah. be like October, Halloween, not midsummer. But then I guess we're like slowly coming into Yeah, maybe fall. there'll be more execution mm, there. Yeah. Perhaps. Sort of get the interest I peaks a little the social early. Assets. Yeah. Hang on, I'm going to lick. Lick paint. It's Max DNA. Oh, yeah. what does what? that even Matt mean? Matt Black is Director there. Director of makeup artistry at Mac described it as Max DNA. So, like, they designed that shade. I mean, creative's kind of cute. It's got people with like art drawings on their faces, and then they match the drawings on the walls and stuff like that. I do think it would be cooler though if it um, was a two-way thing. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I'm struggling to see the actual link between the two brands at the moment. Maybe they do have it. Like, are you supposed to put this paint on your face? No, they do. There's a lipstick. Oh, uh, is there? I thought yeah. you were going to say it was like dual use. <laughs> <laughs> you can put on your walls and your lips. <laughs> like that can't be said. No, there's a lipstick. There's a lipstick. Okay. So that makes way more yeah, sense. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it actually hasn't had a crazy amount of engagement on socials, to be entirely honest. It is a bit random. It yeah. is. It's also very niche. Not many people are black lipstick wearers. I don't think I've ever worn a black lipstick no, in my life. I've not. It'd be cool if it was like tied into some type of like movie launch or like a, a brat summer moment. Yeah. Or like some yeah. demure. Even the black black is not very demure. Very, mindful. <laughs> very cutesy. <laughs> that is everywhere. I've heard it once and now I can't I love escape. it. I rang one of my friends the other night and she just answered the phone. She was like, very demure, very cute. <laughs> So I was like, oh, for God's sake. Have you seen it? I haven't. Oh, Stop it. No, no, no. no honestly, <laughs> you'll watch one video it. and it's going to be everywhere. everywhere. Really? And you won't be able to get out of your head. Like every time I'm just going about my normal life now or someone does something, I'm like, it's not very demure. <laughs> <laughs> we need to show you, you it. Do. It's, it's good, so it's good. good. Um, okay, bit random. Unsure how we feel about that. Maybe we'll have a look and see how it actually performs as a campaign when it's done. Um, East London Stalwarts Grind. Mm. What's this about Grind Coffee? Oh, Lazy Oaf and Grind Coffee have done a collaboration. And Lazy Oaf are like socks and okay. stuff. Okay. Mm. Cute. Again, it feels like a strange time of the year to do that. Socks and coffee is like a classic dad Christmas present. But it is getting into that season a little bit more. I suppose. I just think it's best to build excitement when people are already thinking about Christmas presents and we're not quite there yet. I don't I do start quite early, but I think that's because I've got quite a big family. So I do think I literally buy my Christmas presents like on Christmas Eve. Do no, you, you don't. That really Sorry. surprises me. No, everyone's so confused. I'm like really organized. I don't know. Work. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> oh no, that does scare me. If I'm out shopping on Christmas Eve, there's I've forgotten about someone or something. Like yeah. that's not a plan. Yeah. I just like yeah. I like starting early because then I like having a dedicated like day of Christmas mm. wrapping so I can chill. Yeah. August a little bit too early. Uh, no, I'm just in the thinking stage. <laughs> I'm not in the purchasing <laughs> stage. <laughs> so you were like literally think... like your cookie cutter like approach yeah. to like yeah. so consumers they start <laughs> thinking about it in August yeah. and it's like everyone tries to bucket everyone in this one thing. Um, I mean, we love a good collaboration. We'll we'll see how it goes. I wouldn't say it's it's the most social collaboration though. Mm. Um, what else apart from Jamir are you seeing on social at the minute that you're loving? We've kind of gone very quickly from Brat Summer to Demure. Like one second it was yeah. Party Girl 
And the next world trying to be demure. Mm. I know. What's next? There's no in between though as well. Like those are two very different. It's like yeah. going to create a divide. Like you're going to either have to be having your brat summer oh, or you're very that. demure. And there is mob wife. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? I know. Do you know and one thing? It was it girl for a long time. Oh it yeah. Was. But I'm not yeah. hearing much it girl anymore. No. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really excited about the... Um, is it the Mormon Wives show that's coming out on Hulu for the TikTok Mormons? Oh. You know, Taylor, Frankie, Paul. No. Do you not know these people? No, no. Oh my no. goodness, I'm going to have to give you all the tea afterwards. Yeah. I love the TikTok Mormon Wives. Oh my God. Great. And they've got a TV show coming out on Hulu. Maria, you're looking at me like... <laughs> oh my goodness, right, honestly. Anyway, we won't go into it because it's a little bit juicy and mildly unprofessional for this podcast, but <laughs> I'll explain afterwards and I'm sure it will come up as a topic in a future one. Um, cool, okay. Well, we've kind of set the worlds to rights and I think we're kind of finished up. Yeah. What have you guys got coming up for the next week? Oh, shooting tomorrow. What are you shooting? Exciting. We can blurp the name. Okay, nice. Yeah, very nice. exciting. In Bath. Oh, in Bath. Yeah. Lovely. Local. Oh. Yeah, nice little local shoe. Exciting. What about you, Becky? I've got a number of campaigns that I'm working on at the moment. Can we bleep the names? Yes. Yes. So we've got um, a 4.0 campaign that's coming to fruition. Um, we're working on three campaigns at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, so yeah, very busy times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, look, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and we'll have you again i mean this is your third time how many podcasts have you been on now this is number one. Oh, oh she's amazing. a natural I'm so excited well, to be here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um cool well thank you and thank you to everyone watching for joining us please make sure to like follow subscribe um it makes our week um so we'll see you next week and thanks for watching <laughs>